This video will show you how to set up clicker registration on Blackboard with the Turning Point Registration Tool. Turning Technologies has developed a registration tool that enables students to register their clicker IDs when logged into Blackboard. The clicker ID is a unique number displayed on the back of each clicker that is broadcast when a clicker is being used. It helps the instructor to distinguish the responses from different clickers. Registration serves to link a student ID and hence a student to a clicker based on the clicker ID. With this linkage the instructor can then associate responses from a particular clicker with a particular student, thereby facilitating assignment of grades for participation and performance. The registration tool will be found under Tools on any Blackboard site, providing it has been made available. I'll get into that in just a moment. The student ID is automatically entered when he or she logs into Blackboard. The student then enters the clicker ID manually. Now the clicker ID is linked to the student ID. So let's demonstrate the registration tool. I'm logged into Blackboard, and here's my list of courses. I'm going to use this opportunity to point out that every faculty and staff member has a course called Clicker Help for Instructors. This is where we post announcements and information that provide self-help for your use of clickers. I encourage all instructors whether currently using clickers or considering course adoption, to check out the resources on this site. To access the registration tool, click on Tools, and then on the Turning Point Registration Tool. You'll be presented with two fields for entering and then confirming the clicker ID on the back of the clicker. Here it is referred to as the response device ID because that is the way the six digit number is labeled on the back of the clicker. So I'll enter my clicker ID in the first field. and then confirm it. Note that this is a hexadecimal number, meaning that only numbers and letters A through F are used. Thus, in my number, the first digit is a zero, not an O. Once entered, the clicker ID will now be displayed at the bottom of the tool screen which you'll have to exit and then come back into to display. As an instructor, you'll need to activate the registration tool in each course using clickers at the beginning of each semester. The tool is listed as the registration block under Tool Availability on the Customization menu. With that tool checked on the list, the tool should appear under the General Tools menu for students to access. Let's take a look at how to activate the registration tool. Looking in the tools folder, the registration tool is absent, indicating that the tool has not been activated for this course. So, we go to the control panel, then customization, and then Tool Availability. You'll find in this folder a long list of tools that you can make available, or not, to your students on your Blackboard course site. A check mark in the Available column indicates that a tool is available for use. Going down the list, 
the registration block we see that the available box is unchecked. So I click on the box to enter a check and then submit. Now going back to the tools folder we see that the registration tool now appears and is available to students for registering their clickers. Note that registration via the registration mechanism is campus-wide. A student needs to register a clicker only once this way and his or her entry will appear on the participant list for each course using clickers. As clickers get sold back to the bookstore and recycled, the new user will take over the clicker ID from the previous user upon registration. Also, if you permit students in different classes to share clickers, you may need to manually link their name to the clicker ID. Once most or all students in a class have registered, the list of students and IDs can then be downloaded as a participant list into various Turning Tech software. The list provides the student name, the student ID, and the clicker ID based on the Blackboard class roster. And as I said, it's best to wait until most students have registered before downloading participant lists. The participant list can then be used in Turning Point, Turning Point Anywhere, and Results Manager to generate session reports and to set up a course for managing clicker use data for semester grading. Let me show you how to download a participant list. Let's use Turning Point Anywhere for this demonstration. Upon opening Turning Point Anywhere, the launch pad appears. This will be true on both PCs and Macs, by the way. Under Create and Manage, click on Participants. And then import an LMS list. LMS stands for Learning Management System, and in this case refers to Blackboard. Select Blackboard from among the list of management systems. Then enter the web address for Blackboard at Fitchburg State, which is given here, blackboard.fitchburgstate.edu. Click on Continue, after which you'll be prompted to enter your Campus Network login credentials. Click on Continue and choose Import Participant List and then Continue. Note that this same mechanism can be used to export grades from Turning Point Anywhere into Blackboard. However, my own preference is to do this more selectively through my Excel gradebook for the course since exporting from Turning Point Anywhere since all session data to Blackboard, which I find just clutters up the Blackboard student gradebook. I'll have more to say about that in another video. After clicking on Continue, you'll see a list of all the courses under your Blackboard account. Choose the course for which you want a participant list, then click Continue. You'll be prompted 
to choose a file name and folder into which to save the file containing the list. Note that these files, and there's a list of them here previously saved, are saved with the extension .tpl, which identifies them as turning point participant lists. Having done that, go back to the launch pad and click on edit participant list. Choose the list you'd like to edit or at least examine and click open. You'll see a spreadsheet with columns for clicker ID, listed here as device ID, as well as last name, first name, and Blackboard user ID, which is essentially the username under Blackboard. The student ID is not displayed, but is implicitly represented by the names. In this particular example, I've chosen a course that won't even start for a week and so doesn't have more than a few names with clicker IDs listed. Note that my own name is listed as the instructor with the clicker ID I entered earlier in this video. Let's take a look at a participant list from a completed course for which most names show clicker IDs. In my courses, clicker participation is optional but rewarded with extra credit points. So typically 90% of students participate, but a dependable 10% or so shown at the bottom, choose not to. It's entirely their choice. Although I've just shown you how to download a participant list in Turning Point Anywhere, I should say that I don't typically download participant lists into Turning Point Anywhere, at least as a means to link polling session data to students in a class. Instead, I use Results Manager, another Turning Technologies program, to set up a course based on the participant list and then add in session data as they are collected. Here is Results Manager already opened. First, I want to show you briefly how to set up a course based on a participant list. Here's a list of the courses already set up. To add a new course, click on New Course at the top, then download a participant list and forward. You will be taken through the same steps for downloading a participant list as before. Logging into Blackboard, then choosing a specific course from your course list, and then giving a unique name to what you're downloading. In this case, you are also giving the course you are creating a name. By default, Results Manager uses the name given by Blackboard but you can name it however you wish. Clicking on Create now creates the course and opens up the roster. The roster appears mostly blank in this particular case, except for student names. However, clicker IDs will be displayed if you highlight an individual student name or in this case, mine. As you can see, there are fields on the right for displaying a session and course data for clicker use, 
but these will remain zero until session data are actually added. And the session data will essentially be added as columns across this growing spreadsheet. So let's open another course that contains such data. This is a test course that I created manually by adding data from polling sessions with 10 clickers that I operated by myself. I gave some of the participants dummy names entered manually Here showing how a particular clicker could be associated with a manually entered student ID and a first and last name. I left a few others as unknowns. Those are indicated here. As with a downloaded participant list, the linkage between clicker ID and student name or ID becomes part of the database. And any subsequent addition of session data as a new column gets linked to those participants if any of the linked clickers are used. As you can see, in any particular session, some clickers were used, and so the session data could be linked to those participants in the list other clickers were not used. Note that the unknown clickers essentially represent students who have not yet registered their clickers. I get this kind of pattern every semester, but it is easy to add the student's name manually by clicking on the clicker line and creating a new student and adding in their name and student ID and so on. Waiting until a few weeks into the course to download and implement the registered participant list helps to minimize the need for manual entry of this sort to a minimum. Besides, there is no penalty for waiting. Unknown clickers and their data will be saved along with the rest of the session data and don't need to be identified until you absolutely need them even if not until the end of the semester. And that brings us to the end of this video.